we're going to move on and we're going to do the drilling around the perimeter. Uh, it uses a quarter inch drill bit. So we're going to start with the same hole location that we started with so that as it changes tools, this thing's just going to keep rotating in a clockwise manner. Okay, so our first one was the hole you see there. So when we go to our new cycle, which is going to be a drilling cycle, we're going to select our quarter inch drill from the Sierra F1 aluminum library. Okay, we're changing 5,000 RPM, 18 inches a minute, retract 40. We like fast retracts. It uh, throws the aluminum out of the hole. Now we're going to go to the geometry tab, and we need to uh, select our tool orientation. Okay, so pick the plane that's uh, normal to the hole and x-axis. Next we're going to select the hole itself and then the uh, chamfer at the top which will give us our depth. So that tells the uh, fusion where the top and bottom of the hole is even though the quarter inch drill bit won't be um, touching the outside diameter of the chamfer. Okay, we're going to go to the heights. Uh, we're going to leave uh, some of these at default. Um, pretty much uh, leave them at default and should cut to the correct height. And we do want to check the box that says uh, drill tip through bottom um, because the hole definition is to the depth of a full hole of the diameter. And if you don't select that box, it doesn't extend it for the drill tip. Okay, and then we're going to pick our cycle, and we're going to use the deep drilling cycle again. Most commonly used in soft materials, like brass and aluminum. And we are going to We're going to leave the uh, setting at default. Okay, it's a quarter inch drill bit, so that's a quarter of its diameter per peck. should be fine, especially with coolant. Okay, we're going to change the description to drill one. And then each one will be subsequent numbered. Moving on to the next phase, if the part turned clockwise. And we're going to edit the toolpath we just duplicated, or duplicate the toolpath we just made. And we're going to go ahead and update the name to Drill 2. And then we need to edit the operation. And we're going to keep all the defaults there. We're going to deselect the faces that we picked before. Now we're going to pick our plane for z-axis orientation, our line for x-axis, and then we're going to select again our, our hull and the chamfer at the top. Okay, and it should extend the bottom so the drill tip's going through. And hit OK, and we're done. Okay, again, pause the video here. And
and continue on. I'm not going to make you watch all eight. And when we pick back up, we're going to do the hex here. And um, you should have eight positions for drilling before this. Okay, so we're going to move on with the hex uh, chamfers. We're going to cut those with a 2D contour move. And we're going to um, select from our Sierra one library, the 16th end mill, small one, carbide, real short flute length. So it can't go all the way to the bottom of the hole, but hopefully it'll be enough for our, our Allen key driver bits that are gonna go in this project. Okay, so we're gonna change our RPM to 7,000 RPM. And we're gonna go 10 inches a minute. Small cutter, don't the small cutters don't like aluminum. We gotta make sure there's a lot of flood coolant getting in there. And our ramp and plunge rates to five. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the geometry tab and we're gonna select again, we're gonna start with the same position, so we're gonna start. Uh, where our first hole was drilled and uh, we select the z-axis and x-axis orientation for this routine and then we're going to select the geometry now we can't select the bottom because it's an interrupted hex but we can pick the edge at the top not ideal but we need to make sure we set our depths correctly when we do this use this method okay Okay, we go to our Heights tab, um, and pretty much leaving most of this at default. Yeah, I'm going to have the top height start at model top instead of stock top. It's a small cutter. We don't want to waste time on that cutting error. Okay, our selected contours is this default for the depth, but we don't want to do that. We want to go to selection and we're going to go to the depth of the little shelf there. This end mill should barely, will have barely enough length to get down in there. And then we need to set the top height, which is currently model top. We're going to go to selection just to make sure that we're not picking up on the bottom of the chamfer with the height. We're actually getting the top of the model. Next tab. Okay, we want to change our offset to wear so that the operator can offset for wear on the cutter for cutter compensation. And we're going to leave all the rest of those at defaults. We are going to do roughing passes. Our maximum step over. Um, this is a pretty small cutter. I don't know why we'd go 59 thousandths with this small diameter cutter. Um, so we're going to put in uh, 30 thousandths. That's half the diameter, not. 90% of it. And actually, let's change that to 20. We want to make sure we're, we're um, being gentle with this thing. It's going to be hitting corners as it goes around. We are going to do multiple depths. Our maximum roughing step down is going to be 30 thousandths. 
We're going to do We're going to do one finishing step down. This tends to be a uh, what we call a spring pass. And that final pass is going to be 8,000. Now, we do not want to check this box, finish at only depth with this small of a cutter, going really deep with for its size. And um, we're going to have, it takes a little more time, and it's going to do a rough and finish cut at each level. I'm going to minimize roughing passes just so we can see more of the menus. And uh, we need to get down to uh, smoothing. We're not going to leave stock to leave, but smoothing, we want that on because we're doing a hexagon shape. And that'll increase the tolerance of the uh, motion that the program outputs. Okay, we're going to do three axis machining with this. The fourth ax fifth axis is just indexing it. And then we get to our last page and um, gonna pretty much leave everything at default except for that pesky vertical lead in that I don't like. I'm going to put zero on that and hit OK. And it processes our hex, and we got a nice little hex routine with uh, circular lead-ins. And as you can see, it's doing one rough and one finished pass at each level instead of doing it at the very bottom. This helps with a cutter flex. All right, we're going to move on to the next flat facet. And um, let's go ahead and change the name on this from 2D Contour to uh, Hex 1. And then we're going to duplicate that toolpath. And, and again, I'm only going to show you two. You need to do the other six locations on your own. Um, no sense in you watching me do it. You can always re-watch the video. So I like to physically turn the model so it's in the orientation I would expect to see it. Okay, we've now duplicated it. We're going to edit it. Really, the only information we need to change is on the geometry tab. We're going to clear the selections. New facet for the Z axis orientation. The X axis is already correct, but we'll go ahead and select it. And then we need to select our geometry and we need to go to the next tab. Wrong tab, go to the next tab. And because we use selection for our top and bottom, we need to clear those selections and put in the appropriate faces. That should be it. We're going to hit OK and it regenerates. Again, stop the video here, do the other six locations, and we'll pick up at the very end to talk about what's going to be next. This is it for what we're doing in 5 axis this part. It will be finished out on a 3 axis VF1. We could try to cut the chamfer on the back of this with a swerf cut, um, but there's not a lot of material there, and I, I'm afraid it's going to either hit the fixture or we compromise the strength of our fixture holding technique. So you could go in there with a quarter inch end mill and try to cut the uh, chamfer on the back side of this, but I've elected to do that on the three axis move. It'll also give you a good chance to see the surface finish difference with the two different processes. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you on the next series of videos, which will do the backside of the part.